Gigabyte has confirmed their Ryzen 9000 support through latest Agasa firmware. Intel Core Ultra 7 265K F Arrow Lake S CPU spotted on Geekbench. Intel Core Ultra 200K Arrow Lake S boost clocks has been leaked. And lastly, AMD Ryzen 9000 series Cinebench benchmarks has emerged. Okay, so first of all, Gigabyte has launched their Gigabyte's latest BIOS update, that is the preparation for the AM5 motherboard for the next generation AMD Ryzen 9000 series product. Processors. So as you can see here in the Gaysa 1.1.7.0 patch A release, they have the released in May. This version enables boot compatibility with AMD Ryzen 9000 processors across the X670, B650 and A620 motherboards lineup. And not only that, they also have the Gaysa 1.2.0.0A patch A beta, which will have currently available on the official website that you can download right now, of course, which has the latest beta BIOS optimization performance for AMD Ryzen 9000 processors which will allow full potential of these next generation processors only this particular case of 1.2.0.0a patch and this will allow you to have these three particular features which is the overclocking feature for the amd ryzen 9000 series processor which are already we know which is the curve sharper memory overclocking on the fly and memory over of optimized performance profile so if you're using the gigabyte motherboard of course you would require this particular beta bios if you truly want to enjoy the new overclocking features next up we have Intel Core Ultra 265K F Arrow CPU has been spotted on Geekbench and as you can see right over here which is the Maxon MS iCraft that is the user profile we're looking at and we have the single core test and the multi core test results and in single core it's reaching up to 2252 and in the multi core we're looking at 17722 and when you look into the cluster of cores we're looking at 8 performance core and 12 efficiency cores making a 20 core processor similar to the 14700K and when you look into the comparison for the Core Ultra 7265KF we're looking at this kind of score here which is again 2252 and for the Core i7 4700K we can see 2121 for the single thread score or single core results and when you compare them it's not looking that good because this particular CPU the Ultra 7265KF is only 6% faster than the predecessor which is the 14700K and even worse is that the multi-core results which is 17722 which is as you can already tell is a lot slower which is 24% slower than 4700k so the new arrow lake processors are not looking good at all at least in terms of the multi courses so i don't know what's going on here maybe like it's there has been some kind of issue with the score i don't know but this is not realistic at all because it's slower so this is not at all a jump here in terms of performance so what is going on i have no idea but multi core tests are looking terrible like absolutely terrible i'm hoping this is not a right test has been done or maybe there should be redo it, redoing this test but the multi-core test something is wrong there because they went backwards in terms of multi-core test and probably by two generations who knows this is bad next up we have the intercore ultra 200k arrow leg as boost clocks has been leaked for the p cores and the e cores and now we have the known leaker right tune later reported by video cards and they have got these information which is the for the top skew we have 57 by 4 to 47 by 6 and for the k slash kf skews we have 85k 65k and 45k now for the 85k we're looking at 57 by 54 by 46 e 8p 16 e basically 8 performance score 16 efficiency core now these are the boost clock and the base clock we will be looking for both performance scores and the efficiency cores so meaning 57 meaning 5.7 gigahertz would be the performance score 5.5.4 would be the all core boost and the 4.6 would be efficiency cores boost so similarly 65 65k would be 5.5 gigahertz performance 5.2 all core and 4.6 efficiency so in general we get to see a comparison here with the raptor lake refresh and video cards here and we can already tell that for the core ultra 9 285k you can see for p core boost we're looking at 5.7 but when you compare it with the raptor lake refresh it is 300 megahertz less than that so obviously raptor lake refresh is faster however on e cores we're looking at plus 200 for the e cores boost which is again of course when you compare it again to the raptor lake refresh similarly for the 265k 
okay we are looking at minus 100 megahertz less in the performance core boost but in the efficiency core boost we're looking at plus 300 and also for the 245k we're looking at again same minus 100 megahertz less and plus 600 on the e core boost so in general the performance cores are looking worse but the efficiency cores are looking better take however you like it but yeah that's how it is and when you look into the previous story here which is you know the for the 265k f the multi-core is already looking pretty bad so not sure how accurate that is if that is the case i don't know if this is helping or not we're not sure but for now it is not looking good and lastly we have the amd 9000 cinebench r23 results have been leaked by of course known leaker hxl and when you look into it well these are pretty interesting leaks and so let's look into it of course so this is the ryzen 7 9700 x as you can tell right over here which is quite blurry but anyway when you look into it the single core we're looking at 2280 and the multi core we're looking at 21533 points not bad as for the ryzen 9 9900 x we're looking at 2232 and 32216 so that's the single core and multi core results and one loss is the ryzen 5 9600 x which is the six core processor we're looking at 2244 and of course 17037 as for the single core and multi-core results so in summary we're looking at this kind of list here from video cards we get to see this which is the 9950x was already leaked and also 9950x has been tested by many environments so as at first we have the stock results of course the pbu and expo and curve sharper which is the new tool of course and ln2 don't forget that that is also a part of the results even though that's not really a vanilla test so in ln2 we're looking at 55,296 that has been tested already and of course it's a leak previously has been leaked so considering that's the baseline we have this particular result here and clearly that even the stock result is looking pretty good and one reason why the carb shaper, shaper is pretty good is the you can already tell the jump is actually noticeable from 41,924 to 45,000 so it's a decent jump definitely and now we got to see these three results in the highlighted blue marker of course which is the 9900x when you compare that to the 7900x which you can already tell when you baseline it as in the single core we're looking at 10 percent performance difference basically the 7900x is 10 percent slower compared to the 9900x so of course it's pretty good but in a funny way 9700x is faster only two percent of course just two percent faster but still 9700x is faster in terms of single core so obviously you can tell that in terms of gaming the ryzen 7 9700x will be a better option not sure what the x3d results compared to this but i guess x3d might be faster because it's a 3d processor clearly as for the ryzen 5 9600x we're looking at 20 244 and of course when you compare that to the previous gen 7600x it's eight percent faster not a big jump there i think it is a very underwhelming performance increase when you consider the budget option here which is the six core option but yeah it's not a huge deal in terms of performance even when you look into the 9900x comparing to the previous gen 7900x it's just 10 percent boost so yeah it's a pretty mediocre boost i wouldn't really consider this as a huge jump so upgrading from 7000 series from 9000 series it doesn't make sense at all unless if you're using the 5000 series yeah maybe the performance jump is there as we already know that the 7000 series is already quite a lot faster than the 5000 series so in this case the performance jump for the 9000 series is not that much but there is one particular factor here these results they don't really show you what power level they're running at so we do have uh, all, all the other tests but these tests don't really tell you anything about the power levels you can clearly see it says running so obviously it doesn't tell you the power levels so if it, that doesn't tell you the power levels that might that might tell you that it might be on 65 watts that would be my guess at least because if you're not showing the whole power level then my default thinking would be that it's on 65 watts but we clearly know that these processors are not rated for 65 watts they, are, they can clearly can go higher than that knowing their specs so these result comparison may not be valid or is valid when you come to consider that the previous generation was rated at 65 watts but now we know that it goes 170 watts for the 9950x and 120 for the 9900x so obviously if it's at 65 watts i'm guessing that the results are also 65 watts if you really want to actually have a vanilla comparison but if is it really the case because we already know the power levels are much higher the tdp of course so these results might not be giving you the full picture here 